McKellar. It's Budget Eve, so you are back with us once again. Welcome to Afternoon Briefing, as always. Energy price relief, we're told, will be a centrepiece of the budget for households and for business. Is it clear to you how all this money, it could be about $3 billion, state and federal, can be delivered in a way that is not inflationary? Well, hi, Greg. Uh, great to be with you. Um, look, I think... Uh, any form of relief on energy prices uh, for households and for small businesses particularly, it's going to be welcome. Um, that's the first thing. How it will be delivered, I think here one of the important things is, um, you know, it, it needs to be delivered in a way which um, doesn't cut against what the Reserve Bank is doing with, uh, with interest rates. So if it's adding back into demand, if it's holding demand up uh, for longer, if it's adding to those inflationary pressures, then the risk is that we have fiscal policy pushing in one direction and monetary policy going the other way. We don't want to see an outcome where there's likely to be um, a reaction from the Reserve Bank to push interest rates higher again. That would obviously be very counterproductive. And there are live risks here, aren't there, mm -hmm. on the demand side? Not only just in demand for power, I suppose, but there are also schemes that create deductions for small business to go and invest in new kit or to, you know, better insulate their buildings, for mm -hmm. instance. That is all generating demand, isn't it? Well, look, those things, I think, are very important. And the reason for that is, at the moment, one of the, the biggest constraints the economy is facing is really on the supply side. So I think anything here which focuses on uh, adding to that supply, undertaking more uh, investment, uh, um, cr encouraging business to be more efficient, more effective in the way in which they go about their business, adding to productivity, then I think that is going to be um, consistent with the objective of keeping inflationary pressures in the economy lower. So I think mm. those sorts of things are very positive and con constructive and we would support them. More broadly, because the word surplus keeps coming up, it's mm. uh, very much in our expectations for the current financial year. Uh, do you think the temptation to spend some of that does in fact do what you said shouldn't happen, uh, that fiscal policy might be pulling against monetary policy by the Reserve Bank? Well, again, I think here the government is going to have to get the, the balance uh, right. So uh, it's a wonderful thing uh, if we are to um, go into surplus, and a lot of that um, is driven by windfall uh, revenues that have uh, come about as a result of much higher commodity prices, uh, that's great. Um, what we've got to ensure is that as much as possible of that extra windfall is turned back into paying down debt. Uh, the projection over the, the life of the Ford estimates is uh, over $100 billion worth of interest payments uh, uh, are there. It's uh, moving up to about $20 billion a year. So I think we're, you know, that's a huge cost um, to the expense of other programs, uh, we've, sure. got to, we've got to reduce that if possible. And that will be a wafer-thin surplus anyway, by, mm. by all accounts. Oh, uh, business appears to, on what we know already, uh, be spared any large nasties. Uh, in view of the fact that this is a, a Labor government, do you think that would be a relatively painless outcome for business if it's not going to be hit, say, with new taxes? Well, uh, in advocating in front of this uh, budget, uh, we, amongst other business groups, I think we've been very uh, careful. Uh, we're, we're not saying that, you know, we want uh, particular uh, special uh, programs. Uh, our emphasis has been on recognising that the government needs to get um, the budget, uh, you know, back into order. It needs mm. to undertake that process over the medium term of budget repair. Uh, we're supportive of that process. Um, we say there's a lot they can do on the expenditure side to achieve that uh, discipline. We certainly don't want to see um, new taxes or significantly in increased uh, taxes coming in as part of that uh, strategy. So if they can achieve that balance, then I think business will be very positive, will be very supportive. There might be some things at the margins, though. For instance, in the tourism sector, I think everyone's on high alert mm. for an increase in mm. the departure tax, so-called, or passenger movement charge is its technical name. Uh, is that fair enough in view of mm. the large number of overseas trips that Australians are now taking after the pandemic? Well, we are cautious about that as well. I mean, if there's one sector that's been absolutely pummeled 
uh, in the past uh, several years uh, through the pandemic and through other economic uh, circumstances, it's been the tourism and hospitality industry. So uh, I think we would be very cautious about any increase in that charge. The other thing here is, you know, this is not a general revenue charge. Um, any increase in the revenues should be fed back into the purposes that it's intended for. It really should be about supporting more effective uh, borders, the, the movement of people across those borders, and in particular, you know, the industries that are linked to that, the, the tourism and hospitality industry. So, you know, Well, it could actually become an incentive for people to holiday at home domestically, couldn't it? Uh, look, uh, I think at the margins, uh, obviously, you know, Australia needs to remain uh, competitive. There needs to be a clear justification between what that charge is for and where that money has been spent. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, that's the test. All right. At the other end, really big business and big investments, uh, the petroleum resource rent tax for offshore gas primarily is going up. I don't think that really speaks to your membership necessarily, but do you welcome that? Look, we're, we're, we're cautious about it. So uh, I think here uh, there's been some consultations uh, with the industry, with the major gas uh, producers. Uh, uh, I think in the main, uh, this represents a pull forward uh, to some degree of revenues that might have been further down mm. the track. Uh, that said, uh, it's essential um, in this space. So what we've got to be encouraging is um, exploration and production of gas in Australia. Um, it's very clear we have a critical situation with energy supply at the moment. Gas is an important part of the solution to that for the foreseeable future. So we've got to maintain uh, and attract those major investment projects um, to keep that part of the energy equation going. It's, right. it's vitally important to business. And just finally, Andrew McKellis, McKellar, population growth can't continue mm. at the uh, rate that it's been running at in uh, recent years. Do you accept that? And what, what implications are there on the skills and labour side for that? Well, I think here we, we've just seen the government uh, produce a, a major migration uh, review. It was a very constructive review. And one of the most important things coming out of that, uh, we hope, uh, will be that the, the temporary skilled migration intake will be better focused uh, in the future. Uh, if that means uh, we can be more effective about attracting, retaining uh, people to fill critical skill shortages, then I think that will be a better result. So we're encouraged by that, and I think business is looking forward to working with government to, to get those outcomes yep. in place. Plenty to look out for come tomorrow night. No doubt we'll get a readout from you before too long. Andrew McCullough, thanks again for joining us. Perfect. Thank you.